Hello there, Mr. Zonker here, and this is going to be a quick review video on orders of operations and solving equations. Hopefully you've seen these before, so it's going to be kind of quick. If not, don't worry, we'll figure it out together. Just a reminder, if you see this symbol right here, it means whatever's on the screen, you need to write down in your notes, which it's on the screen now. So write this down as you're heading, and we're moving on. Starting with order of operations, this is a guide that says which calculations come first in expression. You probably remember hearing PEMDAS, which means we start with parentheses, followed by exponents, then multiplication and division from left to right, and addition subtraction from left to right. Some people just remember PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or you can make one up. Purple elephants might destroy all slippers, whatever floats your boat, but this is a good go-to guide if you don't know where to start in evaluating an expression. Let's do a few quick examples here. If you'd like, you can pause the video, try them on your own, and then resume to see if you got them correct. Starting with this one, six times five plus three. We're gonna start with those parentheses, five plus three. That would lead us to six times, five plus three is eight. Then we have six times eight, which is gonna give us a beautiful 48, right there. Next one, we have three minus two squared. I don't see any parentheses, but I do see an exponent right here, this two squared. Uh, since this minus sign is not in parentheses with it, we just square the two. So that's gonna lead us to three minus two squared, or two times two is gonna be four. Then we have three minus four, there's nothing else, no multiplication, no division, anything. So we can move on to the subtraction. Three minus four is gonna be negative one. Last problem, 16 divided by four times two. I don't see any parentheses, I don't see any exponents. I have division and multiplication. Since I have both, we're gonna move from left to right. That means I'm gonna start right here with 16 divided by four. That's gonna give me a four. Then I still have this times two. And four times two is eight, and that's gonna be our answer. Now you don't need to write this down, but I did wanna point out that order of operations is not really a math rule, but it's more like the pirate code. It's kind of like a set of guidelines. For example, order of operations here, we would do our parentheses first. We had that uh, two plus one, which would be three, and then we have the three in front, three times three, which would be nine. If we wanted to use the distributive property, three times two is six, three times one is gonna give us that plus three, also would be nine. So we didn't do the parentheses first per se, we multiplied this three to the group, but as long as you follow your math rules, the order of operations isn't necessarily always uh, the best way to go about things. So it is a guideline, it'll always work for you, but there are other methods in math uh, that are still gonna keep things consistent. Moving on to solving equations. To solve equations, we can use inverse operations and other math tools to find an unknown variable. Let's go over our inverse operations real quick. When you hear inverse, you wanna kinda of think of the opposite. So for example, if we see plus, we might wanna minus. If we see multiply, we might wanna divide. If we see square root, we might square. These are just a few of the inverse operations that you'll use most frequently, but those are gonna help you solve equations for those unknowns. We also want to always maintain equality or keep balance by making equal changes to both sides of an equation. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, or if you're only working on one side, make sure you don't change anything, even if it looks different. One of the math tools we already talked about a little bit is the distributive property. That means you multiply a group by multiplying each part of the group separately. For example, here we have three times the group, 2x plus five. If we multiply that three to the two x, that's gonna give us six x. Then we multiply that three to the five, that's gonna give us plus 15. Distribution is something you, that, that comes in handy when solving definitely. Also wanna talk about combining like terms. This means putting terms together that have the same variable and exponents. For example, down here we have two x plus five x with the same variable, but then this plus seven, with no x variable. So we can combine the 2x and the 5x, 2x plus 5x would give me 7x as total, and then we have that plus seven remaining, another useful tool when solving equations. 
If you're ever solving an equation and feel stuck, here's some good tips to hopefully get you moving in the right direction. Use the distributive property and combine like terms. Get the variable to one term on one side of the equation and use inverse operations away from the variable first. Sometimes that's helpful in the solving process. Let's do a few solving examples. Now I know some of us love to solve these equations in our head and that's awesome, but it is important to know the solving steps. So I want us to focus on these, that for these examples. Here we have three X minus one equals five. I see our variables over here next to the three. So I'm gonna use my inverse operation plus one on both sides of the equation. That's gonna give me a three X equals five plus one, which is six. I have three times X. I could divide both sides by three. That's gonna give me an x equals six divided by three, which is two. Next example, y over five equals negative two. Our variable is that y right in the numerator, which means that that five is dividing. So the opposite of that, I'm gonna go multiply both sides by five, keeping that balance. That's gonna leave me with y equals negative two times five, which is gonna be negative 10. Onward, here we have four times parentheses x plus one minus two x equals eight. I see that I have the opportunity to distribute here, so I'm gonna do that first. That often helps things out. So I have four times x is four x, plus four times one is gonna be plus four. I still have that minus two x equals eight. Looks like we can also combine some like terms here. I have a 4x minus 2x I could combine. 4x minus 2x is 2x. I still have that plus four equals eight. Now it looks pretty similar to the first one. I have my variable next to the two. Why don't we go ahead and minus four both sides? That's gonna leave me with 2x equals eight minus four, which is four. And I can divide by two, divide by two. That's gonna leave me with x equals four divided by two, which is two. All right, last problem, three a plus five equals seven a minus one. This one's interesting because it has variables on both sides of the equation. I wanna move it to one side. It doesn't matter which way you go, but I'm gonna go ahead and minus the seven a minus the seven a from both sides and move the variable to the left. Three a minus seven a is gonna be a negative four a. Then we have plus five equals, my seven a's are gone, minus one. Now I just take those steps, I wanna solve for that a, I could subtract five from both sides. It's gonna give me a negative four a equals, negative one minus five is negative six. I could divide both sides by that negative four. Those are gonna go away and I'm gonna have a equals, negative divided by negative is a positive, I have six fourths. That can reduce to three halves, and that's my final answer. Make sure you have each of these four examples written down, and remember, whenever you solve an equation, you can always take your answer and substitute it back into the variable to make sure that it actually works out. So just a way to check that you didn't make a mistake. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful.